All right. All right. All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Awesome. Hi, I'm Skylar Beckerman. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at LaSalle University. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Weistepec. I'm the Executive Director for Admissions Outreach and Recruitment for Enrollment Management, as well as the Athletic Liaison at Western New England University. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, so I have a, I have a short presentation, so I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. All right, guys, so the recruitment process. So just to start off, um, the recruitment process, is it's a, it's a game, without a doubt. So with that being said, I have a, a small analogy. So it's grades and test scores. So without a doubt, you need to obviously do well in school. Um, you know, coaches out there, they want to see good grades. They don't want to see, you know, low test scores or low grades. Make sure you're doing well in the classroom. That's, that's the most important thing. Next, obviously, you know, if you want to play in college sports, obviously you have to be good, so ability. And then next, honestly, the biggest thing for me um, is motivation. How bad do you want to um, play in college? How, how much are you willing to work in the classroom, work on the field, and then also work to get that exposure? So when it comes to reaching out to coaches, getting highlight filmed, working in the weight room, there's all, all that stuff goes together. Next. You want to find the school that is the best fit for you. Don't play that name game. So don't just try to go after Division I schools. Try to find the school that is the best fit for yourself when it comes to your major, um, a school that's going to challenge you, a place where you're going to play. Um, you know, you don't want to go to a school where – that you won't play till your senior year. You want to try to have that opportunity to be able to, you know, to play on the field. Next, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about this in the presentation. Try to get highlight film of you compiled. Um, definitely try to start that maybe your sophomore to, to junior year. Definitely your junior year is probably one of your most important years. So definitely try to get highlight highlight film of you playing. Next. Whatever school that you're interested in, it, you know, fill out the recruiting form. Most schools have recruiting forms on their athletics website. So, you know, fill out that recruiting form. And then lastly, reach out to the coaches. All of the coaches' information is on, on the athletics website. Um, their phone numbers are on there too. Send a nice email. And also make sure you're, you're sending a good email. You're not sending like a one sentence. Send a nice email. Make sure the grammar's right, you know. Put your highlight film on there and reach out to coaches. That being said, know your options. There is so many different options for you when it comes to Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. There's NAIA, there's junior college. There's so many different um, there's there's so many different places where you can play. I, I thoroughly believe there is a school for everyone out there. And, and you know. I know a lot of people, they want to play at the highest level. They want to play Division One, But you know what? Sometimes that's not always the the best choice or, or, or the best for you. You want to make the best choice that is, you know, when it comes to your education, are you going to get that playing time? So know your options. There's nothing wrong with going to – playing Division Two, playing Division Three going to junior college for two years and then transferring to another school. So definitely know your options. With that being said, your junior year is probably your most important year um, when it comes to in the classroom and on the, on the field. Um, when it comes to your grades, this is probably your, your heaviest emphasis uh, in, in your classes. And when we're and as an admissions counselor, I, I like to really look at your junior year because, like I said, it is one of the most important years. At the same time, this is where you're probably going to start getting recruited to to colleges. So definitely, you know, that junior year, you want to really work hard. 
you're, you know, you're probably going to have a lot of late nights when it comes to doing homework, practicing, you know, hitting the weight room, doing things like that. It's going to be a long year, but definitely, you know, that junior year is so important. Next, uh, make sure, you know, you're cleared with the clearing house and know, just know the, know the rules, know your recruiting rules and what, what coaches are allowed to do as well. Also, you know, register for SATs. I know this year is a weird year with, with test taking, but, you know, make sure you take your SATs most, multiple times. Try to take it two or three times if you can. Um, I was a person that I struggled with test taking, and I, I took it four times um, when I was in high school. So definitely, you know, take them as many times as you can. Um, you know, that SAT is definitely important when it comes to getting into schools. Another important question to ask yourself is, you know, what college level should you play at? Talk to your coaches. Um, you know, be honest with yourself. You know, like I said, you know, everyone wants to play at the Division One level. Everyone wants to play professionally. But unfortunately, that's not the case for everyone. But you are still good enough to play in college without a doubt. There's nothing wrong with playing Division Two, II, Division Three. You're still a good player, you know. So definitely, you know, be honest with yourself when it comes to your ability. And your junior year is a, is a big year for you know, start, start your college research, start trying to figure out what you want to do um, with, with your career after sports. Um, these are all things that questions that you have to ask yourself. So definitely, you know, get your parents involved, talk to your guidance counselors. Those guidance counselors are here to help you go to your guidance counselors as much as possible. They're going to help you through the whole process of your coaches and, and, and any other professionals that are out, to, out there to help you. Another point I'd like to make, um, you know, a lot of families might think, you know, the coaches are supposed to get you recruited or, or, or a coach is supposed to come out, come out to, you know, recruit you. Sometimes you have to recruit yourself, and especially in that division two, II, division three level. Um, you know, coach, you know, coaches are not always full time. They're part time and it's hard for coaches to come out to see you. Like I said, when I was talking about that highlight film, get a good highlight film compile together if you can um send out as many emails as you can whatever school that you're interested in send out emails to coaches let them know that you're interested first and then they can you know recruit you so you have to really work hard in the recruitment process next you know go visit you know go make unofficial visits to the school you know go do a campus tour maybe you know if you're not able to meet with a coach that's fine Go see what the school's all about before um, you know going there because you don't want to just go to the school just for sports and that's something you know it's really important. You want to go there first for your major. Do you like the school, the location? There's so many things you need to ask yourself before it comes to sports. Obviously, sports is something that's very important to you, but you want to make sure that the school is a right fit. And then seniors, you know, you know, you're going to be doing. Um, official visits if you're being recruited. Keep getting in contact with coaches. Keep in contact with all the coaches that you're being recruited with. Like I said, that highlight and 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 that highlight video is very important. Keep that updated. And if you're still you know still looking for someone to play, you know keep that highlight film updated and keep reaching out to coaches. Guys, that's pretty much it for me. My name is Skylar Beckerman. Uh, like I said, I'm the assistant director of admissions at LaSalle. If you have any other questions. Um, please, you know, you can reach out to me anytime. Thanks, Skylar. Uh, so what I want to do for all of you, I'm, I'm going to expand and leave uh, even more what Skylar did, um, because I know both of us actually work at institutions at the Division Three level. But some of you may be sitting here have aspirations for the Division One or Division Two, and, and there's differences when you look in at the level of competition, but even the recruitment aspect. And just to give a little background, I've been working with the, the athletic department for close to 10 years. Um, I help them out with all their recruiting um, recruiting events for prospect days uh, to game day visits. Um, we do pre-read evaluation, so I help assist them with that. Make sure we have that, that partnership between admissions and athletics. So a lot of times people actually think I work in the athletic department because I spend a lot of time in there. Um, but I also have a lot of colleagues uh, who work for Division One and Division Two institutions and learning a lot more about the aspect of those institutions and what they do on the recruitment level for athletes is definitely going to be a lot different than Division Three. So one of the differences when you're looking at Division One, Division Two institution is much of the recruitment 
is going to be done during sophomore or junior year. All right. So if you're looking at like a major sport, like a football, basketball, we want to get that highlight tape together uh, and everything else. So I just want to make sure everyone, okay, all of a sudden I just had the little wheelie turns and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> something must be happening. Um, so that's one of the big differences. The other thing is with Division One and Division Two, you do have to go through the NCA Eligibility Center. So because you have to meet the minimum NCA requirements in order for you to participate at that institution. And then the next step would be to talk to that admissions office and figure out if you do meet the requirements. And this is where that partnership really comes into play between athletics and admissions. Whereas the division three level, you do not have to go through the eligibility center. Now, if, as Skylar mentioned, as a junior, I would definitely recommend filling it out either way. All right. Whether you think you're going division two, II, division three, or even division one, it definitely doesn't hurt to fill it out. Keep in mind, if you are looking at an NAIA school, you do not have to go to, through the eligibility center. It's a whole totally different organization in itself. Um, so I would definitely recommend at least filling out, but keep in mind when it comes to a division three institution, you basically have to meet the requirements for that particular college or university. Now, the other thing you got to think of too is scholarship money. All right. Division one and division two institutions are able to award athletic scholarships, whereas division three cannot. Now I do know during my years, and I've been doing this for 16 years that I've gotten so many families who will come up to me saying, well, there's a way you can do it. There's a way you can work it in the financial aid or the merit scholarship. And the answer to that is no. No Division three institution can award any type of athletic money um, and, and flat out. So any, any school that is doing it is actually breaking NCAA rules. Um, whereas Division one, Division two, and this is, and I'm glad Skylar touched on this with the number one, if you guys didn't remember, it's the grades. Because the first thing that any coach will do is go to an admissions office and tell me what type of merit money they're going to get. Now, if you're not familiar with merit scholarships, this is based on your academic performance. Every single school has it. LaSalle has it. Western New England has it. Um, they want to know that first. And here's the reason why. And this is me being transparent. I always like to let students and families know uh, how exactly it works behind the scenes. So the reason why coaches like to look at that first, because they can save that athletic money and then they can use it for someone else so they can build that team. And that's why doing well inside the classroom is extremely important. The last thing a coach wants to do is worry about you inside the classroom. All right. If you're coming in and you're a little bit on the lower end, that's more work for them to do. They want to make sure they have someone in there who's responsible, who's showing off for us, and who's doing the work. The other thing is there's a lot of tidbits that I've learned over the years from our, our coaches, as well as from uh, some of the Division One coaches that I know pretty well. And it's interesting some of the things, and I, and I know LaSalle probably does the same thing, but students, you got to be aware of what you're doing, not only at your athletic events, if you're doing any showcases, because your character is going to play a huge role in the decision. A lot of coaches usually will take the concept of saying, you know what, I don't care how good you are. If you're going to be really rude to our students, our faculty, or even your mom and dad. I know a couple of coaches who said, I base the character on how they treat your mom and dad. All right. And I know there's some parents here who are probably nudging their kids saying, I told you so. Um, so they look at all that because they really want to make sure they bring someone who's a leader, who's a team player. You may not be the best person on the team, but they want to make sure that you have skills that you can develop and that you can take control and you can be that leader on and off the field or on and off the court inside the classroom. That's what they truly look like. And I've heard stories of how some of the coaches went to go watch a particular player and why everyone's in a huddle, this player's off to the side. And they were like, why are they not part of the team? And that's what coaches really were looking for. Now, because Skylar mentioned a lot of good points. Like if you have a highlight tape, make sure you send that into the coaches because honestly, that's the, especially now, that's the only way coaches are going to be able to determine whether you're recruitable. All right. Now, with, with this highlight film, you don't want to make it lengthy. They don't want to watch a 10-minute film of you, all right? If they're going to do that, they're going to watch you actually play. But if you get less than a two-minute clip, and, um, and Skylar, I think I, I think you played baseball at LaSalle, so I'm going to give the, use that as an example. Like, depending on what position you play, like if you're a pitcher, they're going to want to see speed. They want to see your uh, form. If you're a position player, they're going to want to see how you're hitting 
Is that what you're fielding, you're throwing, you're running, your speed. Like they're going to look at everything through this highlight film. That's what they really want to grasp. They want to see like, all right, is this someone that is going to be um, really instrumental to our team? The other thing you have to give me mind, you guys could be the best player at Amherst or you could be one of the top players. But then if a, if a particular institution is like, I'm sorry, we're not interested, it's because you're not a terrible player. It's because you also have to look at it. Maybe that position is full. I can tell you right now, like if we have anyone that's coming to look at Western New England for Ben's soccer, we cannot take another goalie, all right? Same thing for football. I can't take another quarterback. So the position could just be full because these coaches usually have a plan of how many students are usually looking to bring in per year by position. One year, we, they could bring in 10 athletes. Another year, they could bring in four. It varies year by year. But the biggest thing you want to make sure you do is get in communication with the coach, fill out the recruiting questionnaire, send in your highlight tape, and then they take it from there. Utilize the admissions office. Utilize Skylar. Utilize myself. Send us your highlight film, and we can forward on to the coaches because we both have really good relationships with the coaches. And I, I joke around. In fact, why Skylar was presenting, the men's lacrosse coach was just trying to call me. So we have that good relationship where we know if they get an email from us, they potentially could open that up right away. So you want to make sure you get that film together. Now, if some of you guys are sitting down like, I, that it seems I never got that film, try to do some practice drills, get something. But also keep in mind when it comes to Division Three, it's all open tryouts. For Division One, Division Two, it, it's very difficult to be a walk-on. I, I don't want to say you can't do it. I just know it's very, very challenging. And that's the other thing you want to make sure. You're realistic. I can't tell you, and I know Skyler probably got this too, where I can't tell you how many times I would get a student that comes up to me saying, I want to play for UMass Amherst football team. And they look and they're like 100 pounds wet. All right, you got to be realistic. I, I don't know if that potentially could happen. And especially if you're a senior coming up thinking you have aspirations to play, like their recruiting has already been completed. They're already looking at following years because they already fill that roster. They already got those commitments. So you really want to make sure that you're realistic in that as well. So um, if anyone has any questions, please make sure you put it in the chat. Uh, Skyler and I would be more than happy to help you out. Um, the other thing I wanted, uh, want to do too is, uh, um, so at the division three level, how much influence do the coach? All right. This is actually a really, really good question. The coaches basically let us know who they're interested in. All right. And when they let us know who they're interested in, this is where we try to spend a little bit more time, but I can tell you the coaches are not the ones that will make that decision. All right. And I'm going to give you a story. And I love telling stories. So I was in one high school and I had a, a student. He was in my visit and he was he was being rude. He was interrupting. And I said, what's going on? He said, well, I don't need to listen to all this because the baseball coach already told me I'm getting in. And I said, that's funny because I'm the one that makes that decision. All right. So they won't have an influence so much per se saying, all right, this is a student I want. I don't care what their grades are. We want to make sure we can get them accepted. In the end, the coaches realize they all they want to find someone that's going to retain. They want to find someone that's going to be successful at the institution. Um, follow up with a lot of the admissions offices or with your coaches and see whatever institution you're looking at as far as whether or not they do pre-evaluations or what they call pre-reads, um, because this might give a student and the coach a good idea of where someone stands for admissions. Because the last thing you want to do is go through the whole process with the coaches. The coaches love you. You love the coach. You love the institution. And then all of a sudden you get that letter you're saying denied. And you can potentially set up goals with each institution. And like I said, every single school is going to be different. And you're going to hear that. It's all going to be like, it depends. It's different. Um, but the, like I said, they won't have the direct influence saying, all right, this is a student I'm interested in. I want to make sure we get them accepted. It's more us saying, all right, we know you're interested in that student. Let's do what we ever can to, to admit the student. And in some cases, it doesn't work out, unfortunately. And that's where uh, take Skyler's advice as far as look at the community college, because many of them do have athletic programs where you can become recruited again. I do know I get a lot of the questions about postgraduate years, what they also call PG years. For a student academic wise, I, to be honest, I would not look at a PG year. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying it's going to be the right or wrong answer. Um, but I really feel PG years, you can develop more as an athlete if you have the grades. But if you're a little bit lower end, you're better off going to a community college, doing the athletics to build up those academics. So not only you have a better chance to be admitted, but you also can have a better chance to be recruited and potentially play. Um, but that was a very, very good question, Mike. Thank you so much. And Scott, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. 
Uh, at the moment, <laughs> you covered it. <laughs> so it's it's definitely one of the like Skyler said. It's like a game. I mean, it, it's it, for the coaches. Mm-hmm. It's they're evaluating so many different athletes, uh, so many uh, so many different positions, and they know what need in, in, in order for mm-hmm. them to become successful. And and that's why you also have to be patient. Don't be afraid to flat out ask the coach, where do I stand in your recruiting process? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Ask these questions to the coach. When you, when, you know, when you send in, when you meet with the coach, you ask these questions, write them down before you go in the meet with the coach. Ask how many, you know, how many players are on the roster, how many they're trying to keep, how many are at a certain position. You know, these are, these are all things you need to know because you want to play. Obviously that's like, that's the goal you want to play. So I mean, you don't want to go to a school where you're not, you're either not going to play or you're not going to play to your senior year. You, you want to play. That's, that's the main priority here, obviously. Yeah. No, which is honestly, which is so true. Um, and I was actually just uh, thinking of something I was just going to branch. Oh yeah. Yeah. So another thing, um, and I know some parents on, on here as well, students, make sure you're having that conversation. The coaches want to hear from you. Now admissions is different. I mean, Skyler and I were willing to listen to anyone, whether it's a parent, grandparent, brother, sister, we're willing to listen to anyone. But when it comes to recruiting, the coaches are trying to recruit you. The last thing mm-hmm. we want to do is, is talk to mom and talk to dad all the time and not hear from little Johnny. Um, they, they really want to make sure they hear from the student because communication is key, Communic- especially times like now. Like communication, mm-hmm. you got to stay in communication with the coach. Even after if they said that, hey, we have a roster spot for you, uh, we're really interested, and then all of a sudden two, three months go by and you have no communication with the coaches, they're probably going to go start looking somewhere else because you didn't acknowledge it. And it's not so much acknowledging saying, yes, I'm verbally committing. It's not that. It's just saying I'm still interested. I'm still trying to make up my mind because for a lot of Div- Division three institutions, not, the coaches know they're not going to pressure you to make that decision because ultimately May 1st, is when you're supposed to let us know that you're going to be attending. All right. So it's just making sure you really truly stay in communication with that coach. Let them know that you are still interested. And to be honest, and I know there's some colleges and universities out there that do this where the coach is like, well, you need to let me know by February 1st, whether you're coming. And technically they're not supposed to be doing that, but they're really trying to form their team. And, and you can give a verbal commitment, but I can tell you a verbal commitment to a coach is going to be different than a verbal commitment to us in admissions, because we, we look at a verbal commitment like, all right, great. But we know the commitment really happens when you put down that tuition deposit. That's when Skyler and I both know, like, all right, you're coming. So because things can change. I mean, we had, we had football players that all of a sudden got recruited by Division II school. Mm-hmm. So it, it changes on and off. And, and, and you never know. You never know. Any other questions? Skyler and I love to talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially with sports. Oh, yeah. See, I, we're both sports lovers. Uh, so that kind of out so any other questions so there's no new questions coming in on the chat i'm just um, looking at that now um but if you guys have anything else you want to just keep chatting about so we got until about uh 4 45 5 o'clock somewhere in there is when we're going to wrap up so feel free to fill the time if you want or we can wrap up now yeah no I, one of the other things too uh, right now if you guys are still looking at um, oh, we had another question at the division. You want to you know, answer this one? Yeah. Um, how professional is it? You know, sometimes it could just be a, a, just a video. Just take your iPhone out and, you know, I'm a baseball guy. I played baseball in college. So like, you know, if you play shortstop, just get some grounders, you know, you know, use your iPhone. I know with football, they use, use, uh, um, they use huddle. They're always videotaping for football. So I know football always has film. Um, but whatever sport you're playing, you know, it could be easy as an iPhone, you know. Um, I'm typically not like – I don't – maybe don't put music on there. Maybe it just, it just needs to be a little bit of film so they can see kind of – see what you got. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to show. But and and honestly, there's a lot of vendors out there that are charging a lot of money to put a ticket. Mm-hmm. Together. Skyler's right. Like you can nowadays, you can easily get film with your iPhone. Use the iMovie app and and shorten it up and everything else, and you can easily send that. Um, and like I said, you just want to make sure it's quick because the coaches. I mean, I I've even helped out the coaches where I've got films and I looked at it and I'm like, two ten minutes. They'll probably look at this for like a minute, minute and a half, and then they're done. They're not going to watch the whole tape. There's so many that they have to go through. I mean, they're mm-hmm. that recruiting process and, and so forth. So yeah, it doesn't have to be very professional. It doesn't. 
if you want to make it like a movie or whatever, yeah, go feel free to, but I don't know if it's going to be really necessary. Another great question. And whoever's here, actually, if you want to put in the chat, we're kind of curious to see what sport, if this is, if you're a student, like what sport do you play? Or if this is mom and dad on here, um, what sport does your, your son or daughter play? Um, more curiosity than anything. And this is a typical Zoom. I have actually had crickets on my things. <laughs> okay. So that's 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 tough. Obviously, you won't be able to get that that in-game video. But like I said, even if it's you know, if you go out to a field or or if you play you know play basketball, if you get into a gym. Just a short video, maybe shoot some, shoot some hoops, take get some swings in the cage, whatever you can. You know, get just get some video if you can for right now. And make sure you uh, provide your coaches uh, information, whether it's club or whether it's the high school. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've learned with a lot of these coaches is that man, do they know everyone? Um, and, and how they get a lot of their students. They they usually use their network and and. Uh, I know one of our, our swim coach has a network in California. So she does a lot of recruitment in California for swimmers um, because she knows she, she knows people out there. And so especially around New England, um, I, I know like for baseball, a lot of the Legion ball and everything else, like our coach, the sales coach, they're going to know um, definitely. Perfect. Women's cross. All right. So, um, so yeah, so that uh, Skyler's completely right. Just go out there, um, do some drills like your normal drills, um, just so the coaches have a better th a better way just to evaluate you. The, the one thing is, it's this is definitely a very very difficult time, and it's not only as hard for you as athletes, but it's hard for the coaches. And this is going to be a year where I think the, the coaches are going to be taking a risk on a lot of athletes based on what they hear from the coach and what they like the minimum fill that they might see, or maybe they saw you play as a sophomore. Or, or beginning of junior year, and, and they basically have to fill the, to do the evaluation based on that. Um, but the one thing is, is just keep an open mind. Just if, if for some reason you like, I think uh, Skyler said, like pick the school first for the academics. Do not pick a sport. The last thing you want to do is transfer out. And I can't tell you how many times I've had students come in and say, "Yeah, I want to play football," and they had nursing in mind as a major. And I was like, "Well, we don't have nursing." They come to the institution. They say, "Yeah, I'm transferring because you don't have nursing." And I'm like. All right, so you came here for the sport. Um, you really need to figure out the academics because, God forbid, if you get hurt, like what mm -hmm. if you injury? I mean, one of our best football players had two knee surgeries and his career was done after two years, but he picked us because one of the programs and he knew that was his first priority. Um, so you always want to make sure you find that fit first as far as the academics. Financially is also another, another mm -hmm. fit. When we, when we say – find the best fit. It's academically, athletically, socially, and financially. Now that may be different for each of you. I know mom and dads are like, yeah, financial, but then you have some of you that are like, no, athletics is number one. This is where you need to talk as a family because you have to be realistic of the total cost that you want to make sure like, yes, this is the coach I like to play. I get along with the team. Um, I, I love the academics. I feel the career wise, this is going to get me where I need to go. I, I'm a Western New England grad, so I, I haven't left. Um, I think Skylar, I think you're a LaSalle grad, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We loved our institution so yeah. much that we pay. So, um, but definitely you, you, that's like the, one of the most important factors is just make sure you get that feeling, make sure the academics, because even at the division three level, athletics is going to be so much different than the high school level. Mm -hmm. You're going to have more work to put involved. Um, there's a lot more strength training, a lot more conditioning. Mm -hmm. Uh, that starts over the summer. I'm sure when Skyler went in, he had to do a whole summer workout routine before he even started college. Yeah. And th the coaches expect that. And that's the other thing, like even if you're being recruited and the coach says like, all right, we're going to have a roster. You still have to earn a spot on the team. I've heard students because they came in like, yeah, I already have a spot. And they didn't do any of the workout routines. And there they are with the conditioning, they're last. And uh, I mean, you, you still got to earn your spot. You still got to prove to the coach that you are a leader on and off the field and that you're willing to do whatever you can to put that work in. And then once you're there, it doesn't mean you're going to be on the team all four years either. I've seen kids get recruited their freshman year, didn't put the work in, and they, got, they get cut the sophomore year. You know, you have, to put, you have to put the work in now, and you put, have to put the work in while you're there. 
Um, one, of, one of the biggest ad advice that I would give um, to a high school uh, student who wants to play in college is start hitting the gym now because that's, that's where you, when you get to college, you might be the strongest person on your team now. When you get to college, everyone's, everyone is just as strong or stronger than you. So that's that's usually my biggest advice for 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 an athlete coming in is make sure make sure you're coming in really really in shape. Yeah, that's actually an excellent point to be honest. I think it's probably why I didn't play soccer. <laughs> it's like, and plus I looked at the team; they were too good. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not riding the bench for for four years. So any other questions before we wrap up? Deirdre, I don't know if you have any other questions. <laughs> So you sneak in there, pop up in there. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to wrap up now. Chris and Scott, thank you for taking your time and sharing a lot of valuable information with all of our viewers. Um, it's really great. Appreciate it. And if people want to have more questions to get in touch with you, should they just go to your web, uh, the college website? Easy enough to track you down, or do you want to share? Um, your website. Yeah, is there, is there a way I can chat? I, I don't think I can put anything in the chat. Yeah. You should be able to um, actually maybe, I don't know if you can chat. That might just be for me. If you want to send me your email address and where it says private chat on the far right hand side, I can copy and paste that into the chat. There you go. There we go. And feel, feel free to contact Skylar and myself. Skylar will put his in there as well. Um, feel free to contact us because I mean, we have that relationship with the athletic staff, but we also can help you and guide you through the process. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the whole point of this process is supposed to be easy. You're supposed to have fun. And I think what's happening is a lot of colleges that a lot of people think of like the very selective schools and like, this is very stressful. This is overwhelming. It's not supposed to be like that. And, and Skylar and our job is basically to help you through this process. We want to make it easy. And our goal as admissions counselors is to figure out how do we admit you? Right. That's mm -hmm. our goal. Like we're trying to really figure that out and, and demonstrated interest does help. It doesn't necessarily help as far as like, oh, it's definitely going to get you in, but at least it lets us know that you're interested. And I'm sure Skyler goes to bat with his students. I mean, he has a travel territory. I'm in charge of all the Amherst uh, students and, and I've worked with a lot of them in the past and, and Deirdre I've, I've worked with for years. Um, and they know that, that, that we really truly want to help you. Our goal is not to figure out how to deny you, it's figure out how do we get you in. And mm -hmm. when we see a student that gets excited about the institution and excited about all the possibilities that they feel to fit, then they're like, all right, let's figure this out. Let's, let's try to get you in. So. 100%. More great <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So I think we're going to wrap it up now, but again, thank you for your time. I know you guys are busy, especially this time of year. And well, thank you for having us. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much. And hope good one. Our students will be heading to your institutions in the near future. Hope so. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. All right.